Hello, my name is Kevin Vandekar. I'm here to present the SVF2 format and discuss how it fits in with model derivative and BIM 360. So to start, this is our standard safe harbor. Make sure you, you review it as necessary. So what is SVF2? It's our new high performance online viewing. It was introduced last summer in a beta program and its general availability came July 12th of this year. So the performance for uh, SVF2 is really dependent on the source geometry. So I wanna show you one extreme case. I'm gonna switch over to the browser. And this model comes from 3ds Max. This has 2000 like shaped rings in it. And it's to prove a point, okay? So you can see that when loading this as an SVF, you have 2000 meshes on the GPU. If we were to put this through to SVF2 format, you'll see that now we have one mesh. And this proves the point of how SVF actually works. So its performance really depends on the geometry and the optimization is done by deduplication of like-shaped geometry. So where you saw in 3ds Max, 2000 individual meshes in the scene file, SVF1 produces 2000 meshes that get put on the GPU. SVF2, it deduplicates those like-shaped objects and it puts only the number of meshes that are of that shape and then references them to create performance. It also uses WebSocket communication and this all results in much better performance. So when should you use SVF2? So large AEC models have a great capacity here of having improvement. Should you retranslate existing models? I think that's really up to you. It's gonna cost you an additional uh, charge to retranslate, but the performance impact may be beneficial. So especially again in the AEC space, it could be very valuable. If you're in the mechanical or manufacturing space, you might wanna test it on a few of your models before you really decide. And the other thing to consider is object IDs. So remember that SVF1 and SVF2 has the same metadata properties, but they're identified by a different object ID system. So if you're using external IDs, no problem. Those are always the same based on the source uh, file format. AutoCAD handles, Revit unique IDs, etc. So use external IDs whenever possible, but if you're relying on object IDs, just know that they are going to be different between the two metadata uh, sets. How does it work? Well, the translation process is the same. Affected endpoints are listed here. And one thing to remember is that SVF1 and SVF2 are mutually exclusive. So you can only have one at a time. Um, how do you use it in uh, the endpoints? Well, you're gonna produce the output of SVF2 instead of FC SVF, so it's very straightforward. And for Forge viewer options, you're going to specify the updated environment and API values. Um, the last thing to consider is BIM 360 docs. So BIM 360 docs jobs are now migrated to SVF2. So new jobs work with the model uh, derivative metadata endpoints as is. So SVF2 jobs, you're gonna get SVF2 metadata. So that means back to the object IDs, those are going to align. So you can use the model derivative metadata endpoints without any problems. But older apps that may still be using SVF1 data, you now have a mismatch because the updated model in or the, the new model in BIM 360 is SVF2, and you're relying on an SVF1 metadata format with object IDs. So we have introduced a new fallback flag for metadata, uh, for the model derivative metadata endpoints, um, and this forces the data to be returned in SVF1 form. So this is something that was introduced um, uh, basically in, uh, in, in mid-August. So uh, the documentation will be coming shortly. By the time you see this lightning talk, the documentation will be there. Uh, here's some additional resources to learn about SVF2. Um, and just wanna remind you that there's a lot of stuff going on at Autodesk University for Forge. You can see the roadmap class. We have many lightning talks like this one. Uh, there's a documentary now, and we also have a hackathon running with a showcase to point out what's going on there. So check out the free trial at forge.autodesk.com, and thank you so much for watching.